guess it's some T minus <laughs> two. Um, the registration for the event crew is about to start, and kind of actually, there's 130 people on the team. It's it's an event within itself, just getting the crew, you know, here registered, fed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I love running, I love ultra running, but I also love marshalling as well. I think it's nice to kind of give back. It's just, you see such a different side of the race. Having done it, you see how hard the people this side of it work and how much difference it makes to you. And I just thought it'd be a really good thing to do, being part of this side of it and being part of the team. As a, a runner myself, I'm always motivated by challenges that have an uncertain outcome. That's where a true adventure is. And I guess as an organiser, I've taken a very similar approach. The logistical and safety management challenges are significant and huge and complex. And I look at that and go, you know what? That'll be really fun trying to solve that. There is genuine risk in these events and I like that uncertain outcome in the adventures that I have. It's, it's just an amazing team effort, it's an amazing group feeling, everyone pulls together and it's just incredible. If I hadn't entered I probably would be here on the event team. You kind of know now if somebody tells you you're looking really good in a race that you're actually not, <laughs> but um, you know you still do it and you'll still tell people that and you'll still take it even though you're maybe having a low point in the race. And so it kind of, it's great, it's great to be able to be hey. here to do it and just see the whole race good, right. happen. o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm not at my best. <laughs> I only ever get up at this time when I'm going fishing. <laughs> it's Monday morning, it's the start of the Burghouse Dragons Back and we're in Conway Castle. All is quiet, so I'm happy. <laughs> It's a whole year of preparation for this event. I think, I don't think I've had a day off for a month now as we've been preparing. Uh, we've all been working really, really hard and it doesn't matter how prepared you are, the jobs get compressed into those weeks before the event. It's as much an endurance challenge for the event team as for the participants. Um, it's really, the, the challenge for the participants is obvious. You know, they get up early, they run and walk all day. It's physically challenging. It's, they need to be mentally tough to get through those days. For the event crew, it's a really big challenge as well. They need to be mentally tough, physically tough. They're moving a lot of heavy kit around. They're building, breaking down the campsites. Catering team are up from 4 a.m. Catering stops at 11 p.m. during the middle of the day, so we build a commercial kitchen, pack it all the way again. Um, the safety team are out on the hill the entire time the participants are out. Uh, the race control, the safety monitoring, that's all live. And of course, every day, if somebody will be finishing late, and some incidents occur, so people get really tired. Uh, today, so we, once we finish here and all the runners go, we've got to go back to uh, the camp one and take our own tents down and uh, remove all the rest of the equipment uh, and then load up the vans and then move straight to camp two and then we've got 55, 56 eight-man tents to put up uh, and all the cooking equipment and then our own tents and then get prepared really for the first runners to come in. Two years ago I was cut off here, um, two years ago the, the checkpoint time here was five o'clock finish, there was a group of about six of us who turned up at ten past five, so I was obviously absolutely gutted at the time. The person I was with burst into tears, but she's back here running again this year, which is great, and, but I'm back here volunteering. 
there, ultimately there will no doubt be people who do get timed out at quarter past five now, they've got an extra 15 minutes uh, this year. But I just feel I'll be able to empathise with them, tell them it's not the end of the world, that they can carry on running tomorrow if they want to. And that's what I'd recommend they do, rather than go home, because I think they'd really regret it if they went but he picks the easy one this time, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, I got it's the easy one. Yeah. This is Kirsten. This is Kirsten who I got timed out with two years ago. Two years and she's ago, so I cried now. so much here. Yeah. He should be right. No, I should not. Be. I should not. Be. I want to hear it so much more fun. It's a brilliant. Will you get going? Yeah, I will definitely get going. <laughs> Now we've got, oh gosh, I don't know, about 80 probably out there. Um, but if they're not on the top of the mountain right now and coming down, they're, they're finished. We've got like 20 minutes left. This time's aren't changed. Even, even if we'd started one minute late from the castle, this is, we're on real time here. So, and we're on internet time, basically. So we're on iPhone time. And the race clocks are synchronized with that. So the time on my phone is the time, so 17, 16. Yeah. Hello, fella. All right, now you're just outside, Stephen. Right. So this is your cut-off at this point. So sorry about that. Yeah, no Yeah, this fella's running in now, so just just move along there a sec. There. Hello there, welcome. Yeah. You're just outside. OK, I'm sorry about that. OK, so at this point... I'm in the waiting. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I'm sorry, Patrick. Um, it closes at this time. OK. I know you've tried. You've been running in there, and, and so you've been running hard. But we we have to. The uh, event um, uh, finished uh, complete after. Uh, uh, no, you have more options for uh, reason. Also, the reason I'm lost, Lord. I'm waiting for my couple body, and I've lost the running time, and I'm going more effort. Something enough to hold the time. Shane, um, I've got a chap here. I just want to ask you. Um, about something in the rules, over. He has asked that, um, forcibly that he will remove his number and continue running on the course, over. Um, the, uh, that's absolutely up to him if he wants to do that. We'll, we'll remove his dry bag and uh, etc. etc. from the campsite, over. As described in the briefing last night, the cutoffs are there for the safety of everybody involved in the event. And if he was to continue, my judgment is that he and others, that's a disqualification offence, over. Yeah. Right. Are we no, we're collecting sheep poo. Oh. Yeah. To, to save, save the camper, don't the lie it. How many tents are you putting up? You know. 55. 55 eight-man tents. And they've given us two hours, but we've not done it before, so we'll see. And uh, picking up all the sheep poo first was a bit of a, uh, a kind of an unexpected bonus, so... Uh, We'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm a research scientist. I work with lasers in rooms in the basement in the dark, so this is a holiday because it's outside. We're serving, some are in there and some are, no, we're, we're serving cold. Yeah, there are pancakes in there. Could be in for a good, uh, good sherry this morning, Ben, because the gas is just about to run out. And we've got 500 people to serve. Right. Okay, Jamaican pancakes, but the gas has just run out, so uh, nothing's being cooked at the moment. Yeah, well, when Graham gets it, well, at the moment, we're going to open to serve, so... And for the allergies, I just have a... We've chased the gas canisters, uh, the sausages are now done, or oh, they're on their way to be done. Uh, yeah, so we're pretty much up to speed now. OK, 
Yeah. Exactly. So it's always a busy morning, catering is rammed for an hour as we try to get the early starters out. We're really busy packing the site down, getting ready to go. We've got a, always an awkward transfer with the emergency communications to make sure they're maintained as we move the site. Um, yeah, we're, we are rolling and time is ticking now. Yeah, so we got all 55 blue tents down an hour. That was like a really good time this morning. Shane, Tom and Lucy are gonna head off early. They're gonna get to the site first and then the rest of the convoy vans will catch up later on. It just gives them a chance to like get to the site, scout it out, get a head start on the rest of the event then. Frothy one, that was yours, that was yours. Any more? Yeah, thank you. Oh, right, two of those, one of those. Cheers. <laughs> Quite intense, isn't it, this um, gate stop? It's amazing, we're getting our bottles filled, it's so cool. It's really kind of them. Did they open that can of beans for you? That was the only thing they didn't do, mind. <laughs> put that on the feedback form. <laughs> if they could run yeah. for it as well, that would be good. Yeah. <laughs> you might not be allowed to do that one. Mm. <laughs> 20 minutes till checkpoint cut off. 20 minutes. What's it like being on the other side? The main thing is you realise how much work goes into it to keep you keep the whole machine going. So you do really appreciate it. Because you know how hard these guys are working because it's it's almost as tiring. You haven't got cut-offs in the same kind of stress, but you've got a different cut-off, haven't you, with people coming in and out. Is it nice to know a few people on the other side to get a bit yeah, of a cuddle? Lovely, yeah, I get lots of uh, motivation and things. Oh. So you're sort of surreptitiously caring, aren't you? <laughs> get in, under the radar caring. <laughs> Something like that. My role is to lead the medical team um, and uh, organise them as much as anything else, uh, keep an eye on them um, and do some work in the event control if we've got particular incidents going on that need my expertise. The guys who are coming through now, I think there's a lot of where their minds are at as much as where their bodies are at. It's where their heads are pointing. If their heads are pointing at us, or if their heads are pointing at their feet, the, the ones who are coming in looking at their feet uh, oh, are suffering. Oh, okay. Definitely and, uh, suffering. Five minutes! Five minutes! There's a line where the competitors come down off the fell, and we just timed a couple of people running down. It takes about four minutes for them to, to hit the gate here, and we've got just over four minutes left now. Can you see anyone? There's a few people up there now, yeah. Um, so. They're going to be touch and go, really. Right, you stick with Tim, Emily. Water. Water. This is Tim's bag. Cool. Okay. Give us your water bottles. Right, keep keep walking over this way. We we'll drag this. Keep, keep walking. Cheers. Yeah, keep walking. So oh, when you step across this line, you can't come back in. Okay? Okay. Alright. 30 seconds there. Come on guys. Okay, when you step across this line, you can't come back in. Okay? Are you happy? You can't take this with you. Yeah, I'm good. Go for it. Yeah. Alright? Well done. That's the checkpoint closed now. 1500 checkpoint closed. Well done, mate. You're an absolute hero. Good effort. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That was something special. Now. I don't think I could have done that. My legs are fine. It's been healed to the feet. I'm so pleased we made it. it. You actually want more? <laughs> <laughs> don't ask the man that. As you can see the race route coming up at the top uh, where everyone else is going along the red line uh, and someone just seems to have gone slightly off on the summit. So I think we'll just wait and watch and see what they do and they might re realise their mistake uh, quite quickly I assume when they get down to this kind of next obvious feature. Another day, another car park with a handful of technology 
She's now up the Clinko, uh, which is the lake sort of just underneath Cadridges. Uh, and we've just had an update as we were coming up the road that uh, she has phoned in, she's going well, and she's heading down towards the hotel. So that has, that has sort of um, solidified our thought process in that she's moving, she's sort of still calm person, she's making her way under her own steam. So we can sort of take the foot off the gas a little bit there on that one. Broken. My feet didn't work. Um, I couldn't catch up on the cutoffs. The logistics are balanced and constantly moving and changing, so at the front of the race, a day ahead, we've got our wrangling team, they're meeting landowners, marquee companies making sure everything's in place for when we arrive the following day. Uh, the checkpoint team are out placing checkpoints. And if we go to the right to the back of the race, there's a checkpoint team collecting in checkpoints, kind of sweeping up behind the race. Somewhere in the middle, there's the event team, the camp team, which is the campsite and the kind of logistical hub. And that's got to be built, packed, and moved every day. We're often coming into uh, rural fields, there's no power, there's no water, there's often no phone reception, so we're bringing all of that capability with us. Satellite internet connections, power, etc. And that needs to be packed down every day, moved, um, rebuilt and be ready. And hopefully as the crew get better at what they're doing and more confident and efficient, it just gets easier now as the event goes on. I am proud to be part of it. You know, I feel proud when I look at the crew and how well they work and how motivated they are and the positive kind of energy and experience people take away from the event. That makes me proud, for sure. Yeah, we were just stood at the finish line, just outside the med tent, and one of the one of the guys on the finish line shouted for the medics to run down. And as we got there, <laughs> Sabrina was sort of just being held up by one of them, so we told them to just let her on the floor, raise the legs, and she basically fainted because she'd been trying pretty hard. And uh, all she wanted was chips with salt and vinegar and mayonnaise, so that was the best medicine we could do. <laughs> not show my mum which video. So it wants to do something wrong on day three. Yeah? I like it. Yeah. Matt, half past 11, quarter to 12. Midnight. I'll be back before midnight. Midnight. OK. Do you like beer? Yeah, I've got a few in the van. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, see you. See you later. Bye. So, it's 10 to 9. We've, uh, we've not finished for the day. Chief Wrangler has got to go out uh, and fix some barbed wire fence crossings. Um, so we've got to do the first section of the course. We've got to go about 10k in, fix some fences, and then come back again. And I've promised we'll be back by midnight, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so um, course wrangling, it may be the wrong term, but we kind of quite like the mystery of the term because wrangling suggests some sort of um, problem resolution or argument. We, we kind of use it and apply it to the, the land ahead of us is the course going to work? Uh, and there might be farming, farmers, forestry, forestry operations, new fences, and some materials that we might take out on the course just to make the passage for the participants um, smoother, simpler, reassuring. Um, and that's wrangling. And it's busy, and I've been on for an hour and 50 and I've not stopped and this is the first time the triage queue is empty. So we're trying to send some people away because a lot of people should be... Some people are coming with stuff that they can look after themselves. Um, so trying to send some people straight away um, back to the tents to do self-care and otherwise the physios have had a constant stream and then a few people feeling sick um, and some foot care. So yeah, not too bad so far, no big disasters. Excellent stuff. Extra hug. Thanks, Nicky. Cool. <laughs> Good work. Thank you. Take care. It's been a very cold night. Have a great day, mate. Enjoy. 
it's a holiday, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> In my training schedule, this is a week off, but there's lots of lifting and shifting, so uh, yeah, plenty of weight work this week. Nice, well, finely tuned by day five. <laughs> <laughs> Time to go home. Yeah. Then we have a two year break and forget all about it. being part of it's like a there's a level of intensity that I haven't experienced in any other environment that, that you get you know so you you create these really tight bonds and that's the same whether you're running or whether you're on the event team so it, it's really special following the race <laughs> to, to be honest we've got so many jobs to do we've hardly got a chance to actually see it do you want to go to blue tents then blue tents see that first do the walkthrough no. Yeah. That is the right number of tents. Right. <laughs> well, it's a bit more than we need now. Uh, we're just marking out. So this is the um, uh, the dry bag pen. So the competitors will come here to collect their dry bag and then all the blue tents go in here. Um, so at the moment we're just marking out. Here is the 2019 Burgas Rangers Back Race live tracking in space. If we, if we then add the participants back in, it starts to build a rich picture of how the whole event is moving down through Wales. Um, here are some of the vehicle, the vehicles. So there's a, there's a number of MPVs transporting participants, perhaps round from the support point if they've had to drop out or they've been cut off today. So the challenges with this, with these kind of venues, there's a couple of venues uh, during the Dragon's Back where there is no mobile signal and there's no local internet connection and so in those situations we put up a broadband satellite connection and that's kind of essential to make that happen and then we also do the same thing at the support point so each of the support points got a satellite and they are able to broadcast a live feed of when people come through which kind of again it's about for me with the tracking it's about putting a face behind that dot it's not just little dots, they're anonymous people, they're actually real people which are actually really doing this event. So it's trying to connect people up with what they're seeing on the tracking screen. Okay, my role. So I'm working with Matt and Ellie, and we're shooting uh, daily daily updates. So it's a bit of everything, really. So um, covering the race, but also a little bit of the behind-the-scenes stuff. So put out a film every day by about eight o'clock in the evening, um, just to show the world what what's going on here. We've got a lot of content that we can we can acquire at this race, both um, visually, film and photography, and the narrative behind the race, the stories, the, 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 the blogs and the, the news articles that get sent out. So we've got um, essentially just more dedicated roles at the event than, than ever before. It's a rich experience watching that race unfold from the outside world. Well, I'm just uh, printing people's dragon mail. Do you want to come in and I'll print yours? Dad, I'll just scan your back Oh! Did you see how much came out then? That's good. That's like literally the most ever. So we've got to make sure that the camp's permanently got water. Um, we've got to get water to campus and hot water on for the kitchen straight away because they're catering for everybody basically. Um, and then Ian's basically taking water every day to the midway point and he's going through about 600 litres a day. Just That's just for the runners and what they need during the day. It's happening very quickly, this one. This one starts. It doesn't look like it's happening very quickly for you. It's not happening very quickly for me. I'm not a morning person. I'm not sure I ever will be. I'm 
not really here. You haven't seen me. <laughs> just getting these to soak, these little rice puddings. But I just have this weird, weird obsession with washing big pots. All the runners seem to be happy. Um, yeah, it's been a good week and the weather's been on our side, which is good. I've got work tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah. So it's from field to office. <laughs> that top, amazing, it's super. Well done. They're starting to look tired now, aren't they? Well, yeah, but there's still some look behind you. There's a guy coming up here with a nice little spring in his step. Hello. Hello, Chuck. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Are you well? Yeah, we're oh. spilling hot. Of course you can. Me being the spilly and everything. As long as I push your button and move my beard. <laughs> that would be funny, wouldn't it? Uh, no, because I'd have to come and rescue you. And you get just, ready uh, to. Yeah. I'll go on. Do I get lifted or do I get rescued? Well, you, mm, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty are right on top of one eight nine. So if he's needing help, he will be saying to them now. Two one six. We had a call from uh, a competitor concerned about a fellow competitor who was unwell, uh, and they were concerned enough about his condition that they did not want to leave him. It might well be fairly minor for a person who has run a race like the Dragon's Back, but the whole ethos of mountain racing like this is you don't leave fellow competitors by the wayside. <laughs> Response three, response three, race control. Yeah, he was white. He he was very cold, so we stopped and put him in a in a bag and called it in. Um, we got two guys with him, and the the medics were on the way. And we showed them. I'm getting a bit emotional with it, really, because <laughs> you think you're nearly there and I'm going to make it, and then you see people you've been kind of zigzagging about and forwards with on the back of the pack. <laughs> Sorry. No. We've got a response three team up there at the moment and they're, they're just going to be assessing what they need to do there and what happens next and any extraction plan and things like that there. Anything short of a stretcher carry we should be able to facilitate ourselves. It takes its toll, doesn't it, this kind of event? Yeah, of course it does, yeah. What's the matter with your shoulder? You fell down, where is it sore? Okay, I'm gonna have a feel, okay? Yeah, he wants more water, but... Oh, okay, 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 okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, good on him. You wouldn't give up at this point, would you, though? Five days in, an hour to go. It's time to just get it done, isn't it? So, good on him. And this is kind of a great example of organised chaos. We are setting up the Tregib finish as fast as we possibly can. There's kind of multiple elements over a split site, which is complex. Mm, the runners are bearing down on us as the seconds tick by. <laughs> They've got about an hour and 25 minutes, maybe. They are expected within the next three quarters of an hour, potentially. Uh, the first finishing time last year was about an hour from now. So if they're running a little quicker, it's good weather, good running conditions, not too hot, um, good visibility, they might be quick. So we need to be um, 
making our final tweaks. Um, Janie? Um, He's coming in, he's got a smiley face, he's still got his shades on, he's in a manoeuvre from Rainer Shine, the winner of the 2019 event, Adi. High fives. Um, I need to say the normal thank yous and first and foremost, it is always, always the event crew. So thank you, they have been absolutely As you know, the catering team is still working, there's still a safety team out on the hill, there's still people helping with download, there's still people carrying dry bags. They, they do an exceptional job and uh, as, the, as the race organiser, I, I also owe them.